Okay, here we have an empty propane tank. Now what I do with these tanks is I um, solder in a process port so that I can use these to carry refrigerant because I, I, I work out of a really small car and I don't have room to carry a big tank of Freon. So I've been using these for probably 20 years and I'll show you how I make them. I'm not quite sure if it's legal, but I know that propane has a higher pressure rating than Freon, and I'll, we'll go through that and we'll get a pressure temperature chart out. But the first thing you want to do before you start drilling is make sure that this tank is empty. You stick a, a rod or something in there, push that, v, that valve down, okay, make sure the tank is empty. So then what we'll do next is uh, we're going to drill this out to uh, 7 sixteenths of an inch and then we're going to tap it for a quarter inch pipe and then we're going to put a process port in there and solder it in. So here's the process port and this is a quarter inch pipe thread. We're going to put that in there like that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, our next step was to, we'll go over the pressure temperature chart to um, to make sure that this is not going to be a hazard. Okay, so here we have a LP pressure chart and you can see that here at 100 degrees Fahrenheit we have 172 pounds pressure. And now we'll check the R12 and the 134A charts. Okay, so here's a pressure chart. R12 is this column. 134A is this column. At 100 degrees Fahrenheit, you have 130, you have 117 psi, and you have 124. So putting free on 112 on 134A or R12 into this cylinder will be safe because it's built to withstand pressures much, much higher than that. And you do have a pressure relief valve on here in case of an emergency and it gets too hot. So um, just wanted to cover that for you so you, uh, you could uh, have a little peace of mind knowing that uh, this thing is safe. I mean, I've been using them for probably around 20 years I've been making these. And actually General Electric used to sell a recovery machine that had one of these same cylinders uh, as a, a, um, a tank. So... And that's where I got the idea from. And if that's something that you can use, then uh, you can build one of these yourself. Like I said, all you need is an empty tank. Make sure it's empty and, uh, and a process port. Okay, let's get started. Okay, this is a 7 sixteenths bit. This is the final bit. Okay, so get your quarter inch pipe thread here, tap, put a little cutting lubrication on there, thread cutting lubricant. Get it started, make sure it's straight. Okay, so we got this threaded pretty much all the way in. Now we're gonna back it off. I'm going to use a little magnet that can fit into that space in there, opening and pull out all the shavings. Okay. Now, take our fitting. 
Okay, so that's in there. And we'll do is we'll pull out the Schrader valve and then we'll solder this in and then we'll be done. Okay, so let's remove the Schrader valve out of this fitting. And we can solder it into, into place. I could probably just use pipe thread on this if you want, but I'm going to solder it in. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use some flux on here, paste flux. And this regular, this is silver bearing solder, it's stuff plumbers use. Okay, so we'll clean that up and then we'll pressurize it, check it, check it for leaks. Okay, let's put this straighter valve back in here. And now we'll pressurize it. Okay, so we're going to pressurize this tank. Get some soap bubbles. Looks pretty good to me. And that's how you build a two pound Freon tank. And if you're like me and you drive around in a really small car and you don't have the room for big tanks, these things come in handy. Some of them I've painted different colors, like I paint the white for Freon 12 and I leave this bluish color here for the 134A. Those are the two refrigerants that I use all the time. All right. That concludes this project. See you next time.